Good day, everybody. This is Chris back again with the Agent Scholar. And what I want to do real quick is talk about how we actually name uh, cytochrome P450 enzymes. So what kind of goes into a name? Well, eh, there's a rich history that goes back uh, quite a way, a few decades, and there have been all kinds of different names, and it's still somewhat changing. And there are still some slight variations here and there, depending on uh, who you're talking to and uh, what resource or reference you're using. But in general, what we do is um, the, the present day way of naming things it is more or less derived from the, uh, the amino acid sequence, um, how much we actually know about the sequence for any um, individual or specific gene. And so what I want to do is I just kind of want to start off with the, the broad. So basically what happens is we have a broad definition, and then as we get more specific, we start adding more information. So what we have is, let's start out, out with the super family here, and maybe I'll just change the color uh, to blue. So when we talk about the super family, all right, the super family of enzymes, of course, is the cytochrome P450 enzymes. And within this, this super family, there, there are, are many, many numerous individual enzymes. Um, so for something to belong in the super family and to actually get the name cytochrome P450, um, which I will just put C-Y-P, okay, cytochrome P450, um, the basic inclusion criteria, if you will, um, and maybe I'll just write maybe an I here for inclusion. The basic inclusion criteria is, is more or less it, it has to, it's an enzyme that has a heme a phylate um, iron containing um, prosthetic group uh, within a, a larger protein enzyme. So obviously uh, heme is going to be um, important in that, in that heme, of course, is, this is a phylate. All right, um, you have the sulfur, um, and uh, it, it contains an iron atom that's coordinated in a porphyrin-like ring. And when carbon monoxide is bound to that specific enzyme, um, it has a, a, what we call redu reduced, when it's reduced by carbon uh, monoxide, um, we see peak absorption uh, spectra at about 450 nanometers. So if you have an enzyme that fits this criteria, then we can call it a cytochrome P450 enzyme. That's a whole diverse bunch of, of individual enzymes. So then what we do is we go, okay, well, um, when it comes to the, the individual family, to, to call something a family, uh, to assign it a family, we have to have, um, really we have to have more than about 40% of uh, forty percent of, of its identity um, sequenced that we're aware of. Okay, and obviously this can be really difficult because you have all kinds of single nucleotide polymorphisms that uh, can really muddy it up. But so if we have that information, then we can put, and this is an Arabic numeral one, two, three, four, five, etc. And then within the these these one two three four five you have these subfamilies a b c d e and when we talk about inclusion criteria into these you're you're looking at um, a fifty five percent or more of uh, the identity sequenced all right and then we can even have the individual um, cytochrome p four fifty enzyme. And this is generally, um, if we're talking about a, a single species, all right, uh, of, of animal that we're looking at, we need greater than 97% sequenced. Um, if we're talking about different species, um, or multiple species, uh, so let's put a uh, single all right, and then multiple. All right, we need to have um, greater than 80% sequencing. And then occasionally you might actually actually have an asterisk uh, followed by an Arabic numeral one, two, three, four, dot, 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 right? 
and um, sometimes this is um, this is used at the very end of the name uh, to talk about different uh, allelic uh, uh, variants or very specific variants that, that can occur um, <clears throat> within certain populations. So um, that may happen as well. So when I see something, and I see something referred to as a CYP enzyme, okay, basically what that means is that's all, we, that's all we're talking about. It's just this large superfamily. And then if I were to see CYP1, then I would know this much. I would have, you know, I would know that this is the amount of information that I've sequenced about that gene we're talking about. And then likewise, CYP1A just means that uh, we have this much, okay, we've been able to, to, to get it into a subfamily, and then if we know the individual, the enzyme, then, you know, we could look at CYP1A1, all right, <clears throat> And that would take us down to the, the individual enzyme in, in a specific species. And then maybe we would see something like CYP1A1, and I'm just going to make this up, asterisk uh, 1. Uh, we're talking about a, a specific allele of that. So that's just kind of an introduction to naming cytochrome P450 enzymes. So basically the, the, the rule of thumb is the more stuff you see, the better we, the, the, the more um, completely we have sequenced um, the, uh, the, the protein, the genetic, uh, the amino acid sequence identity of that uh, particular enzyme. Okay, guys, hopefully you found this helpful. And as always, thanks for hanging in there.